So I was going to type up this long educational post, but I have a hard time. Um, sorry, my cat is biting my dog's tail. <laughs> um, I have a hard time seeing or like stopping to read posts. Like when I see a long one, like I really have to focus and I don't have the attention span. So, ow, four, stop it. So, I am watching this uh, documentary called Fed Up. It's on Netflix. If you have Netflix or you have time to go online and watch Netflix, um, you need to watch this documentary. It's talking about how the obesity rates have been rising at a ridiculous, ridiculous speed. Um, <clears throat> I think this last part he just said since 19, I think, 77. Um, Americans intake of sugar has doubled and sugar is it's poison uh, if you have ever seen the study of um, someone's brain who is addicted to cocaine um, and someone who you know eats sugar daily um, their brain um, on the scans looks the same you would think that the person who uh, you know, isn't addicted to cocaine, but eats sugar like a mad woman, uh, you would think they were addicted to cocaine. It has the same effects. Um, it's, it's addicting. Um, <clears throat> but they talked about how a calorie isn't a calorie and how like to, after you've consumed a 20 ounce cup of, you know, Pepsi or whatever, you a kid would have to bicycle for an hour and 15 minutes just to get that shit off um, going. And I think like one cookie, one chocolate chip cookie is, you know, you'd have to jog for 20 minutes. Well, people are lazy and we don't have, you know, a lot of people don't have time. Um, but I really want to get into what I <laughs> originally started this for. So they talked about how a calorie isn't just a calorie. And I found this article, um, or this study that they did. Um, and I'm going to break it down for you. And it um, says, weight management is a simple game of math. Um, these folks argue to maintain your current weight you need to consume the same number of calories your body burns each day to lose a pound you need to create a caloric deficit of approximately 3,500 calories whether you create that deficit by eating less fat <clears throat> less carbohydrate less protein or a little less of everything it's immaterial it sounds sensible but it's actually not true a calorie is not a calorie in more than one sense. Carbohydrate, fat, and protein calories are indeed equal by definition in terms of their energy content, but the body processes each in a distinct way, and these differences have real implications for weight management. In addition, food calories of all types may have very different effects on the body, depending on when they are eaten and <clears throat> what they are eaten with. Uh, following are five specific reasons why all calories are not equal. One, the energy cost to metabolize fat, carbs, and protein is different. The body must use energy to digest, absorb, and metabolize the energy in food. And so it happens, the, go get your toy, that the body uses different amounts of energy to process different energy containing nutrients. Generally, more energy is required to process protein than carbs and more energy is required to process carbs than fat. What this means effectively is that 2,500 calories a day, high protein diet adds fewer calories to the body than 2,500 cal calories a day, high carb diet, which in turn adds fewer calories to the body than a 2,500 calories a day, high fat diet. Admittedly, the differences are small, they do not in themselves constitute a rational um, ir irrational to consume a high protein, low fat diet for weight management. Two, calorie restrictions slow metabolisms or slows the metabolism. 
Listen, calorie restrictions slow the metabolism. The biggest problem with using linear calorie equations for fat loss is, the, is that the fewer calories you consume, the fewer calories your body burns. Thus, if, based on a 3,500 calorie rule cited above, you decided to cut your daily energy intake by 500 calories in hopes of losing a pound a week, 500 calories a day divided, or er, uh, times seven days equals 3,500 calories, you will probably find that you do indeed lose a pound in the first week, but less in each subsequent week. Four, go away. Um, this phenomenon is believed to represent a metabolic adaptation to prevent starvation. Your body literally runs cooler to conserve the reduced number of calories you're eating, thereby effectively increasing the value of each calorie. Um, there was a, a, one of our coaches posted that a girl she was talking to said that Shakeology um, had too many calories and um, it has 170 calories. And so uh, if you think that's too much, then I don't know what the hell you're eating, but that is nothing. So, um, like, my, how I took that was she, she wants to work out and, like, like a bat out of hell, and she doesn't want to eat anything. What people don't understand, especially, like, this documentary is saying people will hit the gym um, you know, like, people hit the gym like crazy, <clears throat> but they don't realize that their body needs the proper, um, nutrients. Uh, what's the saying? Like, abs are made in the kitchen or something like that. That, oh my god, that's so true. <laughs> like, after I had Kamaya, I would work out, and yes, I was not consistent, but I wasn't eating very well either. Um, you caught it. I wasn't eating very well. And so that's why I wasn't losing weight. That's why I wasn't toning up or getting muscle. And then, <clears throat> you know, I was introduced to everything. And um, I was eating better. And I, you know, was consistent. And I, I started to see progress. But... I swear to God, the next person that says Shakeology has too many calories. I swear to God. Anyways, so more relevant for our concerns as athletes is evidence that even small calorie deficits within a single day may alter our metabolism. Okay, listen. Even small calorie deficits within a single day may alter our metabolism in ways that have negative effects on our body composition. A study involving elite female gymnasts and distance runners found a strong inverse relationship between the number and size of energy deficits throughout the day. That is, periods when the body's calorie needs <clears throat> exceed the calorie supply from foods and body fat percentage. In other words, the athletes who did the best job of matching their calorie intake with calorie intake with their calorie needs throughout the day were leaner than those who tended to fall behind. Um, what's important to note about this study is that the effect of many calorie many not many many calorie deficits was independent of total caloric intake for the day. This means that a woman athlete who requires and consumes X calories a day is likely to have less muscle and more body fat if she does not time her eating well <coughs> than if she takes in the same total. Give it to me. Um, number of calories, but distributes them more evenly throughout the day. Okay, that was long, sorry. Three, protein reduces appetite. Protein generally generally reduces appetite more per calorie than fat and carbohydrate. <laughs> Therefore, a person who increases his daily protein intake without making any conscious attempt to eat less is likely to eat less anyway due to reduced appetite. <clears throat> Give it. 
Um, this is another important sense in which protein, carbohydrate, and fat calories are not equal. In a recent study from the University of Washington School of Medicine, 19 subjects were fed each of the three diets sequ sequentially. <coughs> Sorry, I can't, can't clear my throat. For two weeks, weeks they followed a weight maintenance diet. Com oh my gosh, I'm tired. Um, uh, comprising 15% protein, 35% fat, and 50% carbohydrate. For the next two weeks, they followed a high-protein diet of equal calories. The macronutrient breakdowns of this diet was 30% protein, 20% fat, and 50% carbohydrate. carbohydrate. Finally, don't cheat. Finally, the subjects switched to a high-protein diet with the same macronutrient breakdown but no calorie restriction. Subjects were allowed to eat as much or as little as they pleased. Or, oh, um, they stayed on this diet for at least 12 weeks. Or this last diet for 12 weeks. The authors of the study reported that when subjects switched from the low-protein weight maintenance, uh, diet to the high protein weight maintenance diet, they started feeling much fuller despite the fact that they were consuming the same number of calories. Even more signif significant, during the unrestricted high protein diet phase, the subjects involuntar in blah, 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 blah. the subjects voluntarily reduced their daily eating by 441 calories per day and lost almost 11 pounds. Um, in what was it, 11 pounds in 12 weeks, almost a pound a week, um, including more than 8 pounds of body fat on average. Okay, four. Fiber reduces calorie absorption. Fiber is a form of carbohydrate that car contributes that contributes to. I don't know how to say this word, so. Um, Satiety? Satiety? I'm sorry, I don't know how to say that word. <laughs> Without contributing calories. Because it is not absorbed into the body. Um, consequently, or let go. Um, a 100 calorie high fiber food will reduce appetite and subsequent eating more than a hundred. Kitty! Um, calorie low fiber food. Likewise, a person who increases his daily fiber consumption without making any conscious effort to eat less will wind up eating less anyway due to reduced appetite. Thus, a, high cal or a calorie inside a high fiber food is not equal to a calorie inside a low calorie food. Okay. A calorie inside a high fiber food is not equal to a calorie inside a low calorie food. Yet a fourth way in which a calorie is not a calorie. Okay, stick with me. Last one. I know this video is long, but it's completely worth listening to. Timing of eating affects calorie. <clears throat> Timing of eating affects calorie processing. Thermic, thermic effect of food, TEF, is a fancy name for the energy used up as a result of digesting and, and absorbing a meal. A study published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition found that TEF is higher in the morning than in the evening. Um, if you guys don't know what the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition is, add that to your bookmarks or your favorites. It's like AG, agcn.org, I think. Um, read it. They have amazing articles on there. Um, this is one of them. Um, volunteers were given an identical 544 calorie meal at one of three times. In subjects fed at 9 a.m., TEF increased by 16%. In those fed at 5 p.m., TEF increased by 13.5%. And those fed at 1 p.m., TEF only increased by 11%. So it's clear that we burn more calories in the morning. Come here, Katie. The effect of calories on body consumption is also influenced by the size and frequency of meals. 
For example, a Japanese study found that boxers placed on a six meals a day weight control diet lowered their body fat percentage significantly or more than the boxers who ate exactly the same amount of calories in just two meals. Katie, no, Beth, don't. Um, okay, so generally speaking, food calories are more likely to be stored as fat and less likely to be used immediately for energy, stored as glycogen, or used to synthesize new muscle proteins when they are consumed in excess of short-term needs. This is why six small meals totaling 2,500 calories are not equal to two large meals totaling 2,500 calories. On the flip side, Food calories are more likely to be used immediately for energy or stored as glycogen or used to synthesize muscle proteins when they are consumed at times of energy deficit, such as first thing in the morning after the overnight fast. Another such time is after exercising or after exercise. Numerous studies have shown that people build more muscle and gain less body fat or shed more body fat when they consume adequate calories within two hours after exercise than when they do not, despite consuming the same total number of calories over the course of the day. To be sure, counting calories has some value. However, for the reasons cited above, you can't count on calories from any source to affect your body equally in all circumstances. Yes, I know, this was a long video, and I'm sorry about the commentary to my cat and my dog they're being total dicks um but don't don't look at a calorie as a calorie um it's not and i just gave you 16 minutes worth or 16 minutes of reasons why it's not and we like as coaches and as you know my challengers and my uh, the other challengers in the groups like please be conscious of the rising rate of obesity um you know don't be that person that just kind of coasts on get out of your comfort zone and you know really push yourself be very conscious of what you're putting in your body um today i did not do well at all uh a co-worker's little girl had a tea party and they brought some treats by and I uh, I was a fat fat yeah I had about three cookies a whole little cup of some popcorn uh, had some cake a couple Doritos yeah I, I didn't eat very well today um, and I'm not beating myself up over it but I like I know what I ate and I'm gonna do better tomorrow um, and I'm going to double up on my workout tomorrow because I didn't get one in today. Um, but removing, like, all of the sugar, all of, you know, the processed sugars, and I can't even think of what I'm trying to say, but be conscious, you know. Don't just think like, oh, this is low fat. Oh, this is low sodium. This says... Blah, 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 blah. If you cover shit with chocolate, it's still shit. You know, don't, um, don't be blind to that. So I hope you guys learned something from this. <laughs> I'm sorry it was 20 minutes. Um, but to me, I'd rather watch a 20-minute video than read all of that. So, um, 